the topic of my speech is branch engineering works in homogeneous environment. <clears throat> First of all, uh, branch engineering works are stochastic processes which combine <clears throat> the properties of random works and stochastic processes. And uh, such models can find the applications when we uh, describe, for example, the processes with birth, death, birth, death, and uh, transport of particles. Uh, many of results in this theory are dedicated to the processes with a single type of particles. For example, in uh, some works by Professor Machanov with co-authors. In contrast to the previous works, we consider multi-type branch and random works. Especially in this uh, work, we pay attention to the process with two types of particles. <clears throat> uh, we consider um, branch and random works with uh, continuous time uh, on multi-dimensional lattice ZD, where D is some natural number. And uh, in general model, we mainly consider the distribution of subpopulations generated by a single particle of each type. <clears throat> uh, we say that each particle of every type has its own branching intensities and uh, mechanism of uh, migration. Uh, as I've already said, uh, multi-type branching random works can find the uh, application uh, can have some applications. For example, in problems connected with the distribution of epidemics. In such a model, we can call the uh, first type of particles as infected, and the second type of particles as immunity generated. And here, under different initial conditions, we can uh, even study the distribution of, uh, uh, of both infected and immunity generated uh, particles. Uh, on the whole lattice and also at each uh, lattice point. <clears throat> uh, so uh, firstly, I will describe the model we consider, then speak about some, um, some example of the two type branching random works, uh, which has some applications. <clears throat> well, uh, the objects of our study are subpopulations of the particle, which can be represented as the following column vectors. Here, for example, the component n sub i1 of txy is the <clears throat> number of particles of the first type at the time moment t at the latest point y, which were generated by a single particle of type r, which at the initial time moment was located at uh, the latest point x. We also have the following initial condition where delta is a uh, Kronecker function, either the uh, lady ZD or R. Mm. Uh, now I will describe some evolutions which can happen to each particle during some small time dt. Uh, but first of all, we assume that each particle spends at the latest point uh, some exponentially distributed random time up to the first transformation. And then um, particle can either die with the uh, non-negative intensity mu sub i, which only depends on the particle type. We assume that for each type, it's a constant parameter. So we obtain the following probability of particle to die during some small <clears throat> time dt. Also, we assume that particle can produce offspring of both types. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, let beta sub i of kl, where k plus l is greater or equal to 2, be the intensity of particle of type i produce k offspring of the first type and l of the second type. <coughs> In this case, I also want to say that we assume that particles cannot um, change the types. So it means that uh, the intensities beta sub i, beta sub 1 uh, of 0, 1 and beta uh, sub 2 of 1, 0 equals to 0. <clears throat> um, so uh, for our um, intensities beta sub i, we have the following generating function f sub i for each type i, which can be either one or two. 
um, here <clears throat> uh, is the topic of works that branching process in homogeneous uh, environment. We assume that at every latest point, there is a particle generation center. So it's uh, or it can be called as a branching source. It's the point where particles can either die or produce offsprings. Um, and the, finally, we consider the random walk. We assume that particle can jump from some lattice point U to the lattice point V with the following probability. We assume that uh, kappa E, kappa sub I uh, is greater than zero and it's also called um, the diffusion coefficient. <clears throat> For the intensities A sub i, we assume that our random walk is symmetric, homogeneous in space, and irreducible so that we can reach every lattice point. We also have the following assumptions, and then we get the generator of our random walk, which has the following form. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we study the distribution of subpopulations in terms of its moments. Here we mainly pay attention to the first moments under different assumptions. But firstly, uh, we define the generating function for each type i. And uh, with the usage of backward Kolmogorov equations, we can um, find out the uh, differential equation for this generating function. <clears throat> uh, from the previous lemma, we can obtain the differential equation for the first moment. Here we also have this condition, which, uh, give, which uh, provides us that this series, that all the series in these sums uh, converge. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, to f uh, we are going to find these solutions under different con um, assumptions for the random walk for each type. So, but in firstly, we can find the solutions in terms of its uh, Fourier transform. And to simplify the formula, we have uh, these uh, parameters, R sub one, R sub two, B and C. And later, we are going to uh, find out the solutions for the first moment with regard to these values B and C, non-negative values. <clears throat> well, uh, the simple case, then the, the generators for both types are equal. Uh, the, uh, was found the explicit solutions uh, for the first moment in terms of transition probabilities uh, of random work. Uh, the transition probability is the solution of the following Cauchy problem. So uh, with regard to values B and C, we can find the solutions for the uh, first moment uh, in different cases. Now we are interested in, in case when the generators of random works are different. So uh, for example, we assume that the generator, that the random walk for the first uh, type of particles has the finite variance of jumps so that these series converge. But for the second type, we assume that it's uh, jump intensities um, satisfy the following condition. Under this condition, we uh, obtain the following relation, which means that the um, underlying random walk for the particles of the second type has infinite variance of jumps. <clears throat> um, in a case when we had equal uh, random walk generators, we could find the explicit solutions for the first uh, moments. But here we can find only their asymptotic uh, representations. Again, with regard to the values B and C. And here um, I decided to consider the case B and C equals to zero separately. Actually, this case means that 
particles cannot produce offspring, so they can only jump and die. In the in this case, it's obviously that all the subpopulations degenerate. <laughs> but um, in case when some of the parameters uh, is greater than zero, uh, we obtain mm, we. Uh, under some assumptions for these uh, coefficients r sub 2, mu sub 1, uh, and others, we uh, can obtain that uh, subpopulations will not uh, degenerate. And in this case, uh, this symmetric case, we obtained almost the same results. And uh, the last case, when all uh, particles can produce offspring, we obtain the following uh, representations. Uh, so, um, as I have already mentioned, this general model has one assumption that this uh, coefficient, uh, these parameters are equals to zero. <clears throat> and now um, we consider another model where particles of the first type can change their types. So this is uh, the model, this is the example of uh, four applications. So we here, we call the first particles as uh, infected and they can infect others particle. And we have the second type of particles which are immunity generated. So uh, we assume <clears throat> that uh, particles of the first type can only produce the particles of the first type and particles of the uh, second type cannot produce either particles of the second type or of the first type. And we have the following uh, intensity R, which denotes the intensity of the particles of the first type change its type <clears throat> to the second one. Uh, in this model, uh, we assume that at the initial time only, we have uh, only one uh, particle of the first type, and we assume that it's located at the origin. Um, so here we can obtain the, um, we can study the distribution, not of subpopulations, but of uh, the whole population at the latest point X. Uh, here we use the method of forward Kolmogorov equation, which is based on the following representation. These uh, discrete random variables uh, show which uh, evolutions can happen to each uh, type of particles. So these, uh, the uh, distributions are presented here. <clears throat> uh, so we uh, here we can see that the particles of the first type can produce offspring. Nothing can happen to the particles, or they can die. Either they can jump or produce two particles. And the particles of the second type can either die or jump between ladies' uh, points. Uh, so here. Uh, we also study the first moments <clears throat> and with the usage of method of conditional mathematical expectation, we can obtain the uh, equations for the moments. Uh, and as uh, um, in the general model, we, with the usage of the discrete Fourier transform to get the solution for the first moment. And here, the, uh, with the, uh, the function p sub, p sub one of tx is also the solution of this uh, Cauchy problem and is the, with the following initial condition. <clears throat> so the, for the second moment, in some cases, we cannot find the uh, explicit solutions. But uh, for example, in case when these uh, intensities, th then this condition holds, we uh, can find the explicit uh, solutions for the um, second um, moments. These are, uh, designation 
means the inverse Fourier transform for the function. <clears throat> but in case when we uh, then beta minus mu sub one minus r is not equal to minus uh, mu sub two, we can only find the solutions for the uh, in Fourier transform for the uh, second moment. Uh, well, um, uh, in the conclusion, I want to say that uh, we also already found some um, some results uh, about the second movements, but unfortunately, the formulas are pretty huge, and I didn't want to uh, present them here. So I suppose that maybe I can, um, maybe I shall later present the results about the limit theorems, which will be uh, more compact. <laughs> so thank you very much. I suppose if you have any questions, you can ask me. Может быть, можно сказать какую-то экспоненциальную асимптотику без константы, без самой второго момента? Ah, uh, again, they depend on the con configuration of the constant. So in some case, we have the uh, exponential growth. Um, in, in some case, when we then particles uh, produce offsprings with the rates which are much greater than um, some combination of um, gap intensities, but uh, in uh, some Again, uh, with some um, assumptions, there is a, um, not an exponential growth. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, Yulia, thank you very much for your talk. I would like uh, to speak a few words about this problem, uh, multi-type branching random walks. Uh, such topic, we hope, uh, of course, may have many different application. For example, it is possible to combine different types of work, of working of particles in one process. Different uh, types of uh, particle, uh, ty different types of particle. So uh, for my opinion, uh, only in, in uh, some examples, we in we can have uh, you, you can have exact results it's very difficult for investigation um, such model uh, in uh, general uh, in general so i think it's a, a very good distinguish when we can investigate uh, some uh, simple models so it's really complex Really, really complex topic. Thank you so much.